And now to our discussion of the day, we are talking about e-mobility, buses going electric, and even this being a boom to the transport sector. And now joining me is Jit Bhattacharya, who is the CEO and co-founder Basigo. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, um, let's just get into it and even try and look at how did this come to place? How did you decide to get into the electric uh, way of transport? So a lot of the motivation was actually from the very few first few days of the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. If you recall, uh, there was a period of three days in March of 2020 when the government actually paused all the matatus from operating in Nairobi. Many of the trucks and passenger cars also left the road. A remarkable thing happened in Nairobi. The air completely cleared. We were all sending and sharing photos of Mount Kenya, crystal clear 300 kilometers in the distance. Mm -hmm. We really were given a vision of the future of Nairobi. If we can electrify the transport, that will be every day mm -hmm. here. If we can electrify the buses, that will be every day. And that was the motivation behind starting Basigo. All right. And now even looking at the country, Kenya, are we really ready for such a shift uh, from where we are coming from? What is amazing is that we are more ready as Kenya than many other countries in the world mm -hmm. because we have some of the cleanest electricity mm -hmm. in the world. Right now, over 90% of the energy feeding our electricity grid is coming from clean, renewable energy, such as hydropower, geothermal. This is an incredible, abundant asset that we have here in Kenya and more broadly here in East Africa. As a result, if we are to take a single diesel bus that operates on our roads and replace it with electric, it has greater environmental and climate impact than similar initiatives in countries like the United States or Europe, etc. So actually, uh, the electrification of transport is more impactful here. We are more ready than much of the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. All right, and even speaking about uh, us being ready, um, I believe electric buses need charging and now we need to be building uh, the charging sp uh, port, uh, spots for the electric buses. So in terms of this, where are we in terms of even building? Yeah, it's a great question. Actually, we need three things. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we need to make sure that the buses can operate properly on our roads and in our road conditions and the way that our public transport industry works. And so we've been very proud over the last eight months we have actually had two buses operating with City Hoppa and with East Shuttle. And this has demonstrated the viability of this mm -hmm. technology. In eight months, these buses have traveled over 120,000 kilometers. They have carried close to 150,000 passengers here in Nairobi, giving them the experience of the electric bus. But we've proved the technology can work in our roads. Mm -hmm. Second, like you said, you need charging infrastructure. Yes. And here we have to work very closely with Kenya Power to ensure that we're deploying charging infrastructure, number one, to be convenient to the bus operator, but also in the places where the grid is ready and prepared to accept that high power charging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's a very important problem to solve. Third, and often overlooked, we also need service and support mm -hmm. capacity, right? Right now, our entire uh, network of, of uh, automotive maintenance is built around combustion engines. One of the things we are doing as Basigo is we're solving all three of these problems. We're bringing the buses, we're deploying the charging infrastructure to make it easy for PSV operators to use these buses, and we have an expert team of service and maintenance personnel who we've had to train to prepare. If ever the bus is damaged or needs to be repaired, we can get it back on the road. Mm -hmm. We have to solve all three of these problems in order to make this work. All right. Even still uh, talking about this, um, what, is the ex what has been the experience, uh, experience from the pilot program with uh, big bus companies in Nairobi? You've spoken about City Hopa. So what has been the experience so far? The first experience and what was really eye-opening was the response of passengers. Ultimately, mm -hmm. PSV operators are providing a vital mobility service to the city of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, the response of passengers getting on this electric bus, it's quiet, there's no vibration, there's no smell of diesel fumes. And to see them say, if I had a choice, I would prefer to take this option of transport every day ahead of a diesel bus simply because of that comfort. That then provided further motivation mm -hmm. uh, for PSV operators who are also struggling against the other thing that we have all felt as such a pain here in Kenya this year. That's mm -hmm. rising fuel prices, right? Mm -hmm. If we all remember January, the price of diesel was 115 a liter. I don't remember what the price of petrol was, but much closer to that. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking at 162 shillings per liter for a liter of diesel. Mm -hmm. That makes it very difficult to operate a diesel bus business. And PSV operators are looking for a way out. I think there's a recognition now across the ecosystem, this is the future, this is where Kenya is going, mm -hmm. and it's who will help catalyze that transformation mm -hmm. over to electric. 
And even uh, speaking about who will help catalyze this, um, many inventions come and go. Uh, they, they are introduced, they work maybe for three months or four months, and then we don't uh, see them again. So how are we sure that this invention is going to really stay with us? I think the most important reason we know is because, uh, once again, something we feel very acutely here in Kenya, and that is climate change. Yes. Okay? Climate change is real. Climate change is already here. And we just went through the COP27 conference. I think there is a greater understanding more than ever before the time is now. We're mm -hmm. out of time, and yet we still have an opportunity to do something about the climate crisis. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing that we can do, an area we can lead the world because of our clean energy, is the shift over to electric mobility and sustainable transport. Especially as our city grows, if we can imagine that we have clean, comfortable, safe, uh, mobility services for our entire population. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's now a vision for the city, and, and you can't do that with a combustion engine infrastructure built on diesel and petrol. Mm -hmm. You have to make the transition over to something sustainable. And electric is what we have. Mm -hmm. I think it's here to stay. All right. Uh, good to hear from you on that. And now, let, let's move and look at um, plans to, uh, to expand this. Uh, for example, now, next year at a time like this, what are we looking at? Are we looking at it uh, being uh, introduced in other counties or we are still going to be trying it in Nairobi? Yeah. Well, for the past few months, we've been running two pilot electric buses here in the city. Yes. But uh, we're very excited to share. We have 15 buses that are arriving, which will be uh, delivered to a number of PSV operators around the city. So uh, citizens of Nairobi will get the opportunity to ride and they will start to see these buses on all of the major arteries here mm -hmm. in Nairobi. We're very excited about that. Mm -hmm. Our aim and intention is to have 100 electric buses deployed by the end of next year. Now, there's a lot of work that needs to happen in terms of everything we described. Uh, getting the buses here, actually having them be locally manufactured. So all of our buses starting next year will be locally manufactured here in Kenya. Uh, second is deploying that charging infrastructure, working with Kenya Power to ensure that it is there and available to make the buses operate properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then third is expanding our overall operational capacity to support this expanded fleet. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing for us is we are not going to rest until every major route here in Nairobi has an electric bus as an option for passengers. Mm -hmm. That's the most important for us. All right, and now you've mentioned about uh, them being locally assembled. Yes. When you speak about this, we are also speaking about um, new uh, job opportunities for people. Yes. So how is it looking at when it, when it, when it, it comes now to uh, Kenyans making these buses even for ourselves? Yeah, it's probably the most exciting part of this transformation is its broader impact here on the economy. In the manufacturing sector, we can become a leader in the local manufacturing of these electric mobility solutions, mm -hmm. whether it's buses, whether it's bodas, whether it's eventually passenger cars. Kenya has that opportunity and we can create local manufacturing jobs. But beyond just the manufacturing, in providing charging services, in the sales and marketing of these vehicles, in the financing of these vehicles, which are absolutely critical uh, to how they're ultimately going to be deployed, there is a brand new industry that we are creating from scratch right now and the employment opportunities are going to be significant mm -hmm. all right and even as the pilot that has been there the pilot program looking at it what are some of the challenges that um, you've been able to encounter and how uh, are you now going to rectify them even going forward yes i think the biggest challenge that we have encountered so far is uh that people want us to grow much faster uh than we are able to grow mm -hmm. we already have over 100 reservations for electric buses uh just for our first model and uh people want them tomorrow especially commercial vehicle operators. They have capital now. They are looking for a solution to this high diesel price right now. And yet we are still an early stage company. This uh, transformation to electric mobility is just beginning. And not just that, we're competing against an industry in the form of combustion engine vehicles. This industry has been in existence for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. So this is the main challenge. We mm -hmm. have to scale very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And yet it takes putting many pieces together. Um, one of the most important pieces is policy. Mm -hmm. And so this is where the government is currently in the process of crafting what will be the national e electric vehicle policy. And that will be critical for empowering the industry, enabling the industry, giving some rules and um, some structure to how we are uh, electrifying not just the public transport sector but all sectors across mm -hmm. the uh, mobility of Kenya. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really curious to, uh, to understand, for example, uh, for the electric buses, the payment system, how is it and how is it, um, is it more cheaper than the <laughs> one that is uh, normally there? 
So uh, right now, we are a supplier. Uh, as our business, we're a supplier to the existing PSV operators. And the most important thing for us was delivering an electric bus where any passenger here in Nairobi could take an electric bus at, a, at, at least the same or ideally a better cost. Ultimately, we do not control the passenger fare, mm -hmm. but that was our goal. What's really exciting for us is what we're able to provide uh, the actual PSV operators. So right now, PSV operators are paying anywhere from 30 to 50 shillings every kilometer they drive just for diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. That's how expensive it has become. Basigo, we have a very unique financing model which we're using to make these electric buses affordable. We sell the electric bus for a very similar cost to the upfront cost of a diesel bus, right? So that looks very, that, that looks, um, very familiar to a PSV operator. We then lease them the battery, provide charging services and maintenance services through a per kilometer fee. We are currently charging 20 shillings per kilometer for our 25 seat electric bus, mm -hmm. compared to the 30 to 50 shillings per kilometer they're paying for diesel. So in that way, we've made a more affordable project product. Hopefully, that means that can translate to lower fares mm -hmm. for passengers. But ultimately, that's not our choice to make. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Jit, for joining us and giving us your sentiments. Thank you so much. And we believe uh, this uh, will kick off. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Uh, that's it from Business Cafe. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. Enjoy the rest of your viewing.